in the present time number of experiments based on fluorescent microscopy in the microfluidic platform have been adopted to understand the biological events and in this lecture i shall be discussing some of that microfluidic based experiment using confocal microscopy to understand that mechano signal transductions what we are using in our laboratory cell based assay system means cell growth it is a very preliminary experiment in the microfluidic platform here you want to measure that cellular growth on time and how many cells are viable and how many cells are dead so for this the experimental setup is we are using that calcium am staining that is fluorophore which is hydrophobic and it will be easily enter in the cellular cytosol and cellular esterase will hydrolyze that calcium into calcin which has which shows that green fluorescence whereas that pi it is hydrophilic probe that live cell will not allow to enter it whereas dead cell will allow means pi can easily enter in the dead cell and it stains that nucleic acid or nucleus that red so green and red observation in the cellular cytosol we can measure that how many cells are living and how many cells are dead with respect of time in that way you can see it here that red punctus are there means not punctus it is red cells means that these cells are dead all the green cells are living cell and we are plotting that with respect of time fluorescence intensity and we can get that growth curve this is that green means lived cell and this is dark means total dead and living cells and these are the died cells so in that way you can quantify easily that number of cells for the cellular growth with respect of time calcium is one of the means divalent ion is very important in living system and calcium imaging is a technique to understand that calcium status of the cell tissues or media and at the same time cal in the cellular signaling calcium flickers or calcium gener generation is the first event and in neuronal activity calcium is highly involved so to image calcium means to quantify that calcium signaling or amount of calcium there are varieties of fluorophores are used these fluorophores are of two type one is chemical indicators means small molecules like say it will chelate the divalent cation calcium like egta based bapta and there might be that fura2 indo1 flo3 and etc and another group of means uh, indicators which are protein encoded that is gfp green fluorescent protein tagged calcium binding domain of calcium modulin or m13 domain of myosin etc it can be cloned in that host cell itself then uh, we can assay that live cell mapping for calcium signaling and how these experiments are done the general experimental approach is that either that gfp transfected cells or normal cells incubated with calcium specific dye like say in our experiments we are using flu4 direct then rinse and incubate the cells calcium buffer solution then that confocal microscopy will be performed after fixing that that laser excitation emission frequency then exposure time and exposure time is very important because biological samples if we expose for long time that fluoro uh, fluorescence intensity will be bleached then we can fix on region of interest or circular shaped region of interest and we take that image 
images are acquired every 15 seconds for different places of the cells and in that you can at least take 10 or 15 cells. Then all the images are processed using that MATLAB. Then uh, post processing to know that how much calcium flickers are generated with respect of different type of means stress or response or whatever. In our lab we are doing that bone cell say like say MG63 cell lines and your normal cell lines means native cell lines that from mice calvaria that is osteoblast for calcium signaling purpose using macron transduction. So, in that process we are giving different types of fluid flow to generate that calcium signaling particularly oscillatory fluid flow is very much important because that osteoblast like cells present in the bone milieu that is that caninoculi that is uh, capillary network where that oscillatory fluid flow predominates. For this setup, so what type of arrangement should be done? For steady state fluid flow or steady fluid flow, we can uh, connect that inlet of the microfluidic channel directly with that syringe pump. And for oscillatory fluid flow, that inlet of that fluid channel is connected to the solenoid valve and solenoid valve is connected to syringe pump and another port is connected to the valve controller. That function of valve controller is to generate that frequency at what frequency solenoid valve will be on and off to pass the that fluid through that micro channel. In that way that I in the I separate channel that oscillatory fluid flow will be generated. For pulsatile fluid flow we are using that Y separate channel in one arm it is directly connected with that syringe pump to may to form a steady or um, permanent uh, fluid column inside that channel then other arm is connected to solenoid valve then solenoid valve to syringe pump and valve and valve control like oscillatory fluid flow then if we pass that oscillatory fluid flow through that one channel and keep that uh, fluid column constant through that uh, syringe pump, then frequency of oscillatory fluid flow will be same will be the pulsatile flow. In that way, three types of fluid flow we can generate and for rectangular channel that wall shear stress is governed by that equation sigma equal to 6 q eta by w h square her sigma is the wall shear stress, Q is the volumetric flow rate, it is the dynamic viscosity, W is the width of the channel and height H is the height. For a channel of width 1.5 millimeter and height 100 micrometer, if we flow the fluid at 192 microliter per minute, then wall shear stress will be 1 Pascal. For cylindrical microchannel, that governing equation is 4 q eta by pi r q, where r is that radius of the cylindrical microchannel. These two equations are derived from that Higgins Poiseuille's equations, which was already discussed by Professor Chakravarti in his pressure driven flow in the previous lectures. So, using this setup, we are Measuring that calcium flicker with respect of different flow in Mg63 cell lines and osteoblast. And that calcium flicker intensity is measured by F by F0 ratio, means F0 is the initial concentration and F is that after shear stress what is generated. So, in that situation, we are uh, uh, loaded that microfluidic channel with that 
corresponding cells, keeping a 36 stage incubator and giving that flora uh, that fluorophore dry. Then laser scanning confocal imaging was performed at the condition of 2 hertz 256 into 256 pixels using 40 x oil objective at numerical aperture 0 0.90 at 494 nanometer excitation wavelength and 512 to 550 nanometer emission that fluorophore is fluorophore direct. So, this is that video for capturing that calcium flickers which are generated at oscillatory fluid flow at 0.2 hertz. So, if we go through that interpretation of the results, so we are plotting that x axis seconds around 300 seconds we are capturing the figure, uh, uh, images and y axis intracellular calcium flux means f by f 0 what I discussed. So, if you see that in case of m g 63, if we give oscillatory fluid flow at 0 0.2 hertz then that flicker concentration is on in terms of intracellular calcium flux is very high. In contrast, same cell with different frequency of pulsatile fluid flow that is calcium flicker concentration is very less at least at 0 0.2 hertz and other such that is no signal basically. And in case of primary osteoblast, they, when you are putting the oscillatory fluid flow that 0.5 hertz and 0.2 hertz conditions that flicker concentration showing better result like your M G 63 cell lines. So, from this experiment we can conclude that that oscillatory fluid flow that transmit that mechanical signal at that initial stage of cellular signaling event calcium flicker concentration is high and which is very much relevant that in vivo conditions. Autophagy is a very uh, old phenomenon studied from last maybe 50 to 60 years and this phenomenon is a self eating phenomenon for that dysfunctional organelles or misfolded proteins in the cell itself. But in stress conditions, this autophagy phenomenon is highly increased. So, what is the new about autophagy in microfluidic platform? Thing is that we are using that on a reporter plasmid PTF LC3 containing GFPN and a red fluorescence protein by which we can monitor that puncta densities with respect of time and with respect of any fluid shear stress we are giving. So, here in that experience we are giving fluid shear stress and these punctas are throughout the whole cells mean in the cell volume all the areas are means this volume uh, these punctas are throughout all the cells volume. So, to calculate the number of punctas we have to optical sectioning that cells means G stack we have to do. So, we have to use high resolution confocal laser scanning laser microscopy we have to use. So, we are using this system to understand that autophagy event with respect of fluid shear and this type of phenomenon is very much important for the cells which are uh, uh, moving through that blood circulation system. So, in that experiment, so we are preparing a stable cell line. TF LC3 expressing HELA cell lines by using that reporter plasmid PTF LC3. Then, seeding cells in autoclade micro channel and culturing for 24 to 48 hours. That micro channel right now is placed in the microscopic stage and fluidic channels are connected for that shear stress application. Stopping flow at every 5 minutes we are taking that g stack images of the whole cell and that channel that is uh, uh, microscopic channels are means fixed elixir for, for 488 for green elixir for 594 red. Then we are capturing all the punctage means 
you can see that green that is yellow and a red puncta then we are capturing the images then you process the images so that we are if you go through that result this is that zero minute when there is no shear stress that residual autophagy is always there then if we give 2 pascal shear for 30 minutes then red and yellow punctus concentration is increasing which indicates that autophagy phenomena is increased during that 2 pascal shear stress for 30 minutes. So, this is represented by this curve you can see that punctus cells is to total RFP GAP plus RFP GAP minus. Another set of experiments we are performing that traction force, what is traction force that already we have discussed that is when that adhering cell interacts with extracellular matrix through that is your uh, focal addition kinase traction force is generated and that force is responsible for varieties of cellular functions. So, how will assay that how will you quantify the traction force? that general procedure is that uh, that extracellular matrix will be embedded with fluorescent beads then cells will be adhered to the extracellular matrix then we can capture the image of that fluorescent beads which are distorted then remove the cell again you take the picture then these two from these two pictures that displacement of that your micro beads fluorescent and microbits will be calculated for the traction force. So, how this experiment is done in our lab? So, we have generated that ultra polymethoxylene based traction force microscopy means UPTFM. Beauty of this system is that that PDMS what we layered on that glass surface is very thin and it is done by 65 is to 1 ratio polymer is to curing agent instead of 10 is to 1 and this is embedded with fluorescent polystyrene beads 46 plus minus 6 nanometer and this is hydrophobic layer. So, to make it is hydrophilic by the cell will attach that PDMS layer is treated with polylysine make it hydrophilic then we are attaching the cells and that cell will exact force in that here you can see that this is that relaxed hydrogen stressed hydrogen then this is that you, that frozen beads are displaced then you are removing these cells by using trypsinization or you can use flow to remove that peel off that cells then we can again take the image of that frozen beads. So, we have two images and this from these images displacement of the beads is calculated and that quantification of that tensile strength around say 0 0.1 to 1 kilo Pascals exact on the micro channel will be calculated by Fourier transforms. In that way in the each point of the focal additions we can calculate that nature of the traction force or magnitude of the traction force. Another experiment related to fluorescence is a FAF means fluorescent recovery after photo bleaching. So, in that experiment that cells membrane is stained with some fluorophore like say DIO then region of interest is selected and this is bleached with laser ray for 5 second then it is allowing the recovery of the fluorescence in that ROI by which that fluorescence will be coming back to normal conditions. So, this is plotted in that way that y axis is fluorescent intensity, x axis is time, previous situation what is the intensity that is I prime that pre bleach. When you bleach that region of interest, then fluorescent intensity decreases to 0 means that we are telling it is I 0, then it is allowed to recovery the fluorescent intensity in the ROI after a long time then this is called I infinity. The time required to make it half to recover the half of the fluorescent intensity 
we call it T half. So from this curve, from this point to this point, this is the mobile fraction in the membrane and from this point to this point is immobile fractions. How we can calculate that mobile fraction? So we can use that equation that I t at any time t that intensity fluorescent intensity in the ROI equal to I 0 plus I infinity into T by T half to the power alpha divided by 1 plus T by T half to the power alpha. From these equations we can calculate the T half once we know the T half then we can calculate that diffusion of that fluorophore or fluorophore tagged molecule diffusion equal to 0 0.0224 into R square by T half where R is that radius of the ROI that region of interest and most importantly that mobile fraction equal to I infinity by I prime privilege. So, this is very much important for our experiment. So, what we are doing in the next experiment that is a setup is necessary where we can integrate at least three phenomenon for the experiment. One is that fluid flow for the generation of the st wall, uh, wall stress and that PDMS layer embedded with fluoro fluorescent beads for measuring attraction force, cells are attached, then we are labeling the cell membrane with DIO fluorophore and laser source we are using for that measuring that your FRAP. Uh, whole the setup will be placed in the microscope stage, then we are measuring it. So, this is a elegant integrated system to measure that FRAP with respect of flow. So, this is one of the representative example of that fluorescent recovery after photo bleaching. This curve is that theoretical curve and with this theoretical curve we are fitting the our experimental curve and from this we can determine the diffusion coefficient of the DIO fluorophore that 2.0 into 10 to the minus 9 centimeters square per second and mobile fraction is 0.5. This is a representative example. So, as we are giving flow in the microfluidic channel that this end of the, the of the cells means where we are giving the flow direction this is the upstream and this is the downstream and these are the focal addition points where the traction force are generated. So, we are calculating that fluorescent recovery after photo bleaching with respect of F m by F m initial and we are uh, with respect of uh, means normalizing the data with, uh, with the uh, we are calculating that how much fluorescent recovery at that upstream and downstream end in presence of fluid flow. We are taking control cells where that no fluid flow is there, this is represented by the red line and this blue line particularly say upstream where that high traction force is there and the dotted blue line where that downstream high traction force. If you compare with within a 5 minutes there is a huge difference with respect of control cells between that upstream this positions and downstream position that mobile fractions which indicates that fluidity of the membrane means temporarily, temporarily that fluid flow influence that membrane fluidity upstream and downstream and as time is going on at the tw time 20 minutes there is not much difference with respect of control, but after 20 minutes there again difference arises. Means by this setup we can assess that how that fluid flow is affecting that shear uh, that membrane fluidity and which will be measuring by FRAP analysis. The, then we are coming threat. Threat is a phenomenon that two fluorophores will be there, one is donor 
another is acceptor that donor emission spectra will overlap with that acceptor excitation spectra and emit that emission light and that equation is for that fret E fret equal to 1 by 1 plus R by R 0 to the power 6. R 0 is the distance that is Forrester uh, radius the characteristic distance where the fret efficiency is 50 percent and R is the distance between the two molecules. Fret generally we are using for that interaction of the molecules or molecular assembly and disassembly. So, here we are studying that lipid raft is a molecular assembly present in the mem mem membrane and how that lipid raft assembly and disassembly is affected by that fluid stir. So, these are varieties of acceptor and donor you can fix you can pick up any one of the donor and acceptor for the experiment. Here we are picking that DIO that carbocyanin dye tagged with lipid then acceptor is DII whose excitation is 5 part 3. When these two fluorophores are given in a cell then they will be concentrated in the lipid raft. So, you will be getting that fret fluorescent energy transfer that yellow line indicates. Then if we uh, bleach that acceptor that DII then then DIO will recover the fluorescence means in the presence of DII that fluorescent intensity of DIO is quenched. So, we are measuring that fret, in, uh, fret intensity by this equation I fret equal to DIO post minus DIO pre divided by DIO post. And fret intensity is measured normalized with respect of your uh, means control and we are plotting that normalized fret intensity with respect of time when we are imparting that flow 20 dynes per square centimeter. What we are seeing that when we are imparting flow that fret intensity is decreasing then when we are withdrawing the flow then again it is recovers the fret. What this means that when we are giving the flow that lipid rafts are disrupting means two fluorophores are separated by distance and when you are withdrawing flow again they are coming closer together to uh, assembly the lipid raft. And this is more or less same with equivalent to beta uh, m beta C D that is your cyclodextrin which sequence that cholesterol one of the component of the lipid raft which is not affected by that fluid flow. Besides these experiments, there are some experiments are undertaken in microfluidic platform to assay that uh, cell migration. Particularly in tumor environment, cell migration is very much heterogeneous. So, to understand that heterogeneity of the cellular migration, that microfluidic platform is very, very important rather than uh, macro scale Borden's chamber. So, what strategy is undertaking in that process? That two gel process was undertaken by the Hessler group. The principle is that when you giving the interstitial flow, that flow interstitial flow will be controlled by that gel concentration of the one channel, then another channel that cells will be embedded and cells will migrate is a fine tune of interstitial fluid flow and cell will be accordingly sense that fluid flow and migrate. That construction of the fluidic setup is that there are two reservoirs and these are the raised structure of your pillars and these pillars one, two, three groups of pillars make two channels and that collagen gel we are giving and this is collagen gel with embedded with that cells. And here that matri gel is giving different percentage by which that porosity is uh, will be different and interstitial fluid flow will be different to sense that cancer cells. 
to maintain that fluid here uh, sorry that is your interstitial flow that pressure drop was maintained between the two reservoirs by circulating the fluid from uh, left reservoir to right reservoir that is 6 millimeter uh, uh, that uh, uh, height of that fluids are maintained. And that channels here that magnified image of that setup these are the channels and this is uh, these are the pillars not channel these are the pillars and this is the channel uh, say channel uh, gel 2 and this is gel 1. With respect of interstitial fluid flow, this is upstream and this is downstream. And same setup used for at the static condition where that both the reservoirs fluid is remaining fluid height is remaining same in static condition. Then all the images of that cellular migration was captured every 15 interval for 16 hour and the Im then images are processed and polar plot was done. This is for static and this is for in the flow condition in the direction. Here we will be seeing that in the polar plot all the cells more or less concentrated in the center place one or two cells are migrated whereas in case of flow there are lot of cells are migrated in different direction. And direction of the migration uh, is indicated by this figure this is the start of the cell cell is migrated in that way pathway zigzag way then it is the end. So, S is that represents the total path length R the net displacement R f is the net displacement in the flow direction and we are calculating that speed S by time directed velocity persistent and directed persistence in that way both static and flow condition percentage of cells how much migration is there we calculate it. And that Hessler group shows that that when you are giving some flow through the interstitial flow that influence that cellular migration and that cellular migration is heterogenic. Most of the cells 40 around 40 percent cell is against the flow and another 40 percent say in that flow directions means downstream and upstream and rest among the 20 percent cells which are very fast or very slow and some are totally random. So, this phenomenon may help to decipher that metastatic potential of the cells whereas, if the same experience in the bottom chamber that will not give that much of heterogeneity of the cells because cells are moving from top to bottom directions on directional flow. So, merits of the on chip migration assays are following in vivo micro architecture may be mimicked in vitro interstitial flow may be applied to cells to mimic the in vivo conditions while performing the migration assay. Cell migration may be tracked throughout the time of the assay thereby revealing the parameters like speed, direction, different cell behavior migrating cell within a population and other gradients can be imparted in that microfluidic system. So, in a nutshell that microfluidic system based experiment will be used to assay that mechanosignal transductions, cellular growth, cellular migration and so many experiments can be designed according to the need of the biological output. So, I think all these things will give some idea importance of microfluidic system for cell culture and development of assay system. Thank you.